Planet Earth is the UK's biggest greenhouse development, comprising seven huge buildings that will cover the equivalent of 80 football pitches or 220 acres. When completed, it will be the home to over a million plants, which will increase Britain's crop of salad vegetables by 15%. Over 2 million tomatoes will be harvested every week, 52 weeks a year, and peppers and cucumbers will be picked from February to October. This scale of production is already underway in Holland, but until now has never been tried in the UK. It's the future, it's actually the present overseas, I think that's the whole point of Thanet Earth, that we're bringing uh, leading technology and finally getting it into the UK so that the UK can be more competitive, produce more products here, more jobs here, uh, and bring, bring the business back to England. Each greenhouse will be 140 metres in length and fed by its own reservoir, which will capture rainwater and recycle the water the plants grow in, meaning there will be no drain on local supplies. Several power generating stations on the site will heat and light the buildings and, as a by-product, will feed power into the national grid to help local communities. Curtains and shades on the sides and roofs will keep 95% of the light inside, avoiding unnecessary light pollution. We have a whole uh, uh, range of, of sustainable credentials for the project. Uh, primarily we're using uh, what's called CHP, Combined Heat and Power Engines. So we'll be actually generating electricity as the primary uh, activity of, of, our, of our heat generation. But then the hot water and the carbon dioxide come as byproducts of those processes and they're the two uh, elements that we actually need for the greenhouse product. The crops themselves will be suspended from the 8 metre ceiling in huge hydroponic rows, similar to the process used in this greenhouse already in operation in Teesside in the north of England. The plants will be grown in nutrient enriched water, so they never have to touch the soil, making them more resistant to pests and diseases. The suspension of the crops at waist height rather than at ground level makes them easier to pick. The plants actually grow in a substrate because soil uh, growing isn't really practical, there's too much seas, uh, disease and pests that exist in the soil. So we use a substrate just like anybody would in their greenhouse. So rather than using a grow bag which is peat, which is not very environmentally friendly, we actually use a man-made substrate, it's called rock wool. And the plants sit in there and the root system uh, go into a, a larger slab. And then the other point is about the watering. It's, it's very bad to water the plants only once a day at the end, which is typically what everyone does. They come home from the office and, and feed the plant. That's not the way to do it, really. The idea is little and often. So every half an hour, our plants are watered by a dripper feed system. And the whole process and the uh, fertigation, the feed that we give the plants, we can control by computer. So it's all about giving the plant just what it needs at exactly the right time. East Kent has proved to be the ideal location for the project as it has 17% more light than other parts of the UK. The enthusiasm of the local community has also helped and encouraged the building of the site. We have a huge sky, light is, is, is our all and everything, uh, all the other inputs we can actually put in ourselves but we, we need that basic light and Thanet has a great clear sky as you can see, we have 17-20% more light than other areas of, of Great Britain so that's the first thing. The second thing is that we've had a, a really great community who've really welcomed us in, we've worked with to, to, to create the Thanet Earth project and, and work with the community and an understanding and then the, on top of that there's over 500 jobs going to be uh, created here at Thanet Earth. The UK's largest fresh produce supplier, Fresca, is developing the site. It says the advantages of Thanet Earth are self-evident, with the vegetables' growing seasons being greatly increased. However, despite its success, the model is unlikely to be copied across Britain. We'll be adding an extra 15% to what the UK actually uh, grows, but unfortunately such, such a state is the industry that that's still only going to be 3 or 4% of what we actually consume. On items like peppers, we only grow one pepper in 10 of what we actually consume here. Cucumbers, it's less than one in three. It's the same for tomatoes. So Thanet Earth offers the first turn of the tide and really this is the UK horticultural industry fighting back. But there's a long, long way to go, a lot of potential, and, and we really see our seven greenhouses being swallowed up very quickly. We've had a huge amount of interest from, from retailers and, and, and other customers. The arrival of the project in East Kent has been welcomed not just from an environmental point of view. 
It is providing much needed employment in an area that over recent years has suffered from economic deprivation. This is a fantastic uh, achievement that we in Thanet have been chosen for this green technological site. And this is a very good company because they have already discussed that it will be not only job creation, but there will be a, a chance for improvement for young people to come into the industry and to progress through the industry. And of course this is the future, there is no question about that. So, you know, we're, we're very, very pleased that the youngsters of our, our area will have this career opportunity as well. The local council is keen to stress the area's environmental credentials. It is already the home to one of the UK's largest offshore wind farms. The Kentish flat site in the Thames estuary is seen as complementing Thanet Earth. We're very keen to get behind the green message. At the moment we've got just immediately behind you there is a wind farm you can just see in the Thames estuary and behind me very shortly there we're looking at a major wind farm of some 300 odd, 300 odd um, wind turbines so but yes, yes, we are very green-minded, we're open for business and we really want it to happen. As part of the construction work, an archaeological investigation is taking place in areas where ancient burial grounds would otherwise have been lost. Archaeologists know from previous excavations and surveys in the surrounding area that this part of East Kent has a long history and is worth investigating further. Evidence of Bronze Age cemeteries, a medieval farmstead, and 20th century military trenches have been found, providing a rich seam of data for archaeologists and historians alike. It will add a lot to the prehistoric database um, because we know there are lots of burial mounds in Thanet, it has a very high concentration of burial mounds, and we've found some on this site. Um, for the medieval period, it's equally important. We know all the way along Seamark Road there are farmsteads which were unknown before. Um, and right up to World War II, really. So we've had lots and lots of evidence. The very earliest remains found on the site so far, Bronze Age burials, date from around 2000 BC. Most prehistoric barrows or burial mounds in East Kent have been ploughed flat through farming, so the discovery of the remains is seen as very significant. They have shown that the site has been used for agriculture for thousands of years. Probably the most exciting discovery is the Bronze Age skeleton from what we call a beaker burial. And it's called a beaker burial because of the beaker that was buried in the grave with the individual. It seems to be an adult male and he had buried with him a very nice pot, um, a dagger and a wrist guard, which is something you wear against your wrist if you're pulling back an, a bow and arrow to protect your wrist from grazes. So that was really spectacular and everybody seemed to be very excited about it, particularly because the beaker will be examined for residues of food and drink. And we think that in this time, which is about 4,000 years ago in the Bronze Age, they were probably brewing some kind of beer or some kind of mead. So there's quite a lot of local interest in that. <laughs> As part of the ongoing plan to involve local people in the site, a series of open days have been held to exhibit the discoveries. They've been amazed by what they've seen. They saw some of the objects and they saw a presentation on a screen and I was here to talk to them and they said things like um, it was really nice, it was such a privilege to see the material as it's coming out of the ground and not just in a museum. And people who live in Thanet have lived here like almost all their lives were just saying, you know, we drive past here every day, all we've seen is fields, and now we know what's buried underneath. If all goes to plan, Thanet Earth is hoping to have the first plants in place by the end of the year, which means production should be underway by late winter next year. With only a 10 week period from planting to when picking can begin, the UK could be about to develop a new taste in agriculture with homegrown salads available all year round.